All right, let's get started here. Uh, good afternoon and welcome everyone to another Yale Appliance webinar. Today we're talking about a timely topic here, how to buy a barbecue grill as we get into grill season in New England. Um, today's presentation will be by Steve Steinkoff, our CEO. With me today also is Francesco Froyo, our general manager. Uh, we will have the presentation for you and then there will be Q&A after that. Um, just some housekeeping, we will be recording today uh, and sharing this recording and presentation with you. So keep that in mind as you take any notes. Um, if you're interested, we have all of our previous webinars on our YouTube channel. You can check that out for uh, tons of other topics on there at this point. And with that out of the way, um, uh, let's get started. Steve, over to you. All right. Thank you, Pat. How to buy a barbecue grill, kind of a curious pitch way to open with a beautiful outside uh, outside area. I love this. It's called an L shape. You can tell by it looks like an L with your grill and then you're entertaining, overlooking TV, good lighting, um, really good. But, but getting to the subject of grill, I, I figured we do this um, before Memorial Day when people are thinking about grills because there's so many. There's there's Kamados, there's charcoal, there's gas, there's Prograss, there's hybrids, there's now griddles, there's pellet types. Which one do you buy? And, and I've been in sales and a while, I've been in marketing for probably 10, 15 years. But before that, I always ask somebody, you know, who are you? How are you going to use it? I mean, when you're talking about grilling, are you cooking just some burgers and dogs? Are you cooking for a lot of people, a few people, just yourself? Do you like to cook low and slow? Um, there's any number of ways to do that, but I realized that I'm old fashioned, um, that this may not be the way. So I did what everybody else does. I asked chat GBT what the frequently asked questions are. And by the way, you can, we have a tight knit group today, but um, feel free to ask questions as, as I go along and I'll answer them at the end. And anybody watching on YouTube, um, I answer, I go back and answer questions like that as well. But you know, the first one is what type of grill, gas, charcoal, griddle, or electric. I thought electric was interesting. Um, you can't put you can't put propane gas on balconies in Boston's against the law. So electric is an option. But um, and then we have uh, what are the most um, important considerations? We go into grill grates and and added features as well. So with that, I'll leave with one little image. The best thing I have is at the end, and it isn't even a grill. And the most popular thing we the most popular outside item is now a griddle. So with that in mind, here are the types that we're going to discuss. We'll get into the gas grills, pro gas grills, Kamados. Uh, we're going to talk about why you see pictures like this, grills with Kamados, pellets, and then grills. Then we're going to go into specific brands and some new and some new stuff as well. So let's talk about the gas grill. Everyone knows gas. Gas is easy. It's fast. It's measured. You can go up to 900 degrees to sear. The problem with gas is grilling Smaller items like vegetables, fruit, rice, very difficult on a grill. And the other knock on grill from the other gas grill types is flavor. What does gas taste like? It doesn't add, you can't add or really infuse that. Well, I'll show you a few that you can, but you can't infuse the way you can with charcoal and certainly pellet. So if, if, more, if gas is good, more is better. Um, the pro gas grill, now an average gas grill has got six to eight. 10,000 BTUs per burner. And typically there is six to 10,000 BTU per burner. Gas grills go from like two to six, uh, uh, two to six burner heads. When you're talking about a pro gas, we're going from six to 10, from six to 10,000 to 23 to 25,000. So you're cooking very fast. You get better rotisseries, you get better sear elements, better construction. On the right-hand side, you get the best grill uh, manufacturer. That's a hybrid grill. We'll get into that in a second. Then you have Kamado and charcoal. Charcoal is gives you the flavor and texture the gas cannot and the added temperature. The problem with charcoal is you got to load it right. Um, there's more to actual cleaning with the ash as well. And then on the left-hand side, you have the Kamado, which is a charcoal. That's a, Kamados came back from uh, Japan after World War II. Um, when we're when when GIs were stationed over there, and you can do anything on a Kamado, you can bake, you can make pizza, but the learning curve on a Kamado is is unlike anything else. You know, gas, you put the meat down. Anybody can be a griller, 
but it takes time to learn the Kamado systems. I'm going to show you a, a Kamado that's a little bit easier at the end. You know, the, the, the Kamados that are most popular, certainly Kamado Joe and the, and the big green egg are the, are the most popular you see um, throughout. That's why you see grills with Kamados is Kamados is the more intricate type of cooking, whereas the, the speed, the easy, the, the fast grill types, you see a lot of this when you go to house or when you're trying to design your own um, outside grilling center. From there, we go to a newer type, but this is pellet. Now, the great thing about pellet, pellets, they call themselves a grill, but they really aren't. This is an electric, outside electric convection oven powered by pellets. The great thing about pellets is um, if you want to think of any flavor, whether it's like, say, let's say pecan chipotle, you're not that you'd put those together, but you can get pecan pellets, you put, uh, you can get chipotle pellets, put it in the hopper, um, and, and, and it infuses that flavor with the, with the electric convection system that's, that's on a pellet. It's great to infuse, but you're not getting near to 900, so you're not grilling. So if you want to grill a few hot dogs or something, um, you're not going to do it quickly in a pellet. But if you want to smoke something, it's, it's way better in a pellet than it is on any type of grill. So then we have the griddle. I love grills. Uh, I always tell the story that the old Yale was on Canal Street, right across from a luncheonette. And this guy made everything in a griddle. You can make anything. He made omelets, hamburgers, hot dogs, hash browns, all at once on a griddle. But to give you an idea, we had you know one of our uh, appreciation lunches uh, for the staff that works in Stoughton. And Deeg uh, made everything from rice, uh, chicken bowls, enchiladas, everything was on the griddle. So you can really do a lot of stuff. Now, the downside to a griddle versus a grill, you're not getting that sear or that char you would with a, with a grill, but you're getting to be able to cook more food on a grill than you would on a grill. Here's some of the other features that you want to talk about is we, we go from Weber up uh, because typically the lower price, and I know we have a question about that afterwards, typically the lower price of, uh, are can't survive in New England, you know, the, the composition of the grill. You know, the other types... Uh, I'm not really fond of porcelain uh, grates because they can chip and then rust. I like stainless. The preferred, the most preferred is is the diamond cut, which is the thicker stainless you get with the Heston grill. We'll, we'll talk about that. And obviously grills can go anywhere from 28,000 on a smaller Weber to 150,000 on some of your larger prototypes. Then we talk about searing. A gas grill does a nice job of searing, but you understand that any gas type, whether you're talking about your gas stove, or a gas uh, burner uh, diffuses heat. If you want a real direct sear, you have to do that with an infrared burner um, that goes directly. You have less diffusion with an infrared. So more of the prototypes, the Weber has a sear in it, in its in its tops in its uh, top, but it's only like a six thousand BTU sear. You know the the Hestons and the Lynx and the DC um, Heston and Lynx specifically, but really good sear. So does DCS, but they do a different type of sear. And then you have rotisseries, um, all different types. Uh, the pro types have a um, infrared burner in the back. So you have a, you have that crisp along with that, that, uh, that, that heat coming from the top as well. Hessens is the best. It's a variable 12 to 18,000 BTU burner in back. Um, also, you can buy grills, obviously with the with the if you're doing stand up with the burner on the other side if you like to you know cook corn on one side um, and barbecue on the other also if you if you get the grill heads you can buy different components with the uh, burners being uh, one of them as well let's talk about specific brands and here's an interesting brand weber killed it during the pandemic and have done poorly ever since i guess because a lot of people bought grills uh, when there was nothing else to buy. And they're a very interesting company insofar as they have three different lines, the Spirit, which is their cheapest, the Genesis, which they put all their investment on, and, and then the Summit, which they haven't touched in 10, 15 years. Now, on the, um, on the Weber, you, on, the, on the Genesis, they've added the, their OGS system in response to, their, to the griddle, where you can get a special grate and hold their, their griddle, but it's not as big. They, they, they came out this year with their own version of 
uh, an auger griddle as well. Blackstone is the uh, most popular. Traeger's probably the best, and I'll show you that in a second. And now Weber came out with theirs as well. But you can griddle on a on a on a Genesis by using a different grate. You can also get a crisper and some other attachments as well. So you can turn your grill into something a little bit more than that. But really only on the on the Genesis, which is their middle model. I find that kind of curious. Then you have DCS. I, I really like DCS. One of the original grills. They they do something really different. They have ceramic rods all throughout, which increase the heat, eliminate. Uh, grease flare-ups, but every inch of this grill can be a sear because it goes up to 1100 degrees. Um, interesting, they have their, their series nine it will give you a charcoal trace. You can infuse somewhat flavor into uh, your gas grilling as well. And you do have the uh, rotisserie and the infrared back. Then you have Lynx. Lynx is a very interesting company as well. You have their they 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 have a they have three types of grills. They have their uh, they have an all trident sear. Their their element is ceramic, which is weather resistant. But they have an all sear grill. I'm not sure how I feel about that because when you have infrared, the difference between done and burnt there's a very short time duration for that. I prefer the grill with a combination of both. But uh, they have the all the if you want an all infrared sear, they have that a combination, or you could buy just some gas grills as well. Then you have Heston. Heston has probably the best rotisserie. They have all colors from, you could choose, I think 15 different groovy colors. If you want um, a groovy colored uh, a grill with a good rotisserie. And they have the diamond, they have the diamond grates, diamond cut grates. They're thicker. So they hold heat a little bit better as well. And then you have Kalamazoo, which is considered to be the best grill you can buy. It is because for two reasons. They have, if you take a look underneath that grill head, it's, it's got a drawer. And in that drawer, you can put in charcoal and wood to really infuse flavor into the, uh, into the meat that you're cooking. Also, it's, it's a really deep grill. And they designed that for a reason, to give you a better airflow for a more natural convection. So really, this is the best grill. Also... If you live in on the Cape Cod, you can buy this in marine grade. It adds 20% to the price, but uh, marine grade is a different composition of steel and they apply terrain to it. So it resists all way better than, than anything else in the market. In fact, really, if you're going to put this next to an ocean, Kalamazoo is the best. Now, the unfortunate part to Kalamazoo is really the, the average, the starting price to Kalamazoo is $25,000. On you know the pro types, it's nine to 15 the, you know, the Weber Genesis is really a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. To give you an idea of what the scale is. Now, one other thing I should mention is, let's just say you like a Heston or, or a, uh, or specifically DCS. They have a lesser series for DCS. It's series seven. Lynx has their Sino, uh, Sedona series. Heston's got their Spire. I like the Spire and the DCS better because they're made very similarly. The the Lynx they farm out to China. But you, instead of getting 25,000 BTUs per burner, what you're getting is 22 or 23,000. The, the rotisserie isn't good. As it, the rotisserie won't hold as much. The infrared and back isn't as, as good. On the Heston, you don't get the diamond-shaped grills, but you still have a 22, 23,000 BTU burner. Instead of spending nine to 15, you're spending seven to nine instead. So you're saving some money there. You get just a little less power, a little less features, for you know, twenty percent less money. Traeger's got a, a Traeger has a new a new Timberline where they add an induction burner to the side, so you can add, so you can cook lobster something really bigger with induction power. Induction's magnetic heat, which is an instant power, and it's a uh, uh, instant simmer as well. Timberline's a little thicker, holds more. the The problem with um, with with these type of grills or really any grills, when you open it, the heat, the heat gets, uh, the heat's emitted and you get to almost start over, which is tougher for an electric convection. With, with, uh, with Traeger, you have that smart, you have the smart functionality where you can see the temperature on the, um, on, on, on the interface of, uh, of your phone. Then you have the Kamados. This is the new smart Kamado, which 
which has this, their smart series, which makes Kamado cooking uh, or uh, ceramic cooking a lot easier because um, you don't have to guess as much with charcoal um, on their uh, with their smart uh, with the smart Kamado Joe. Speaking of smart, Weber, uh, Lynx had the first smart had they they had the first smart grill, which had an algorithm which was to test which where you could find out your uh, your medium rare. It would get it would be able to understand you in your medium rare and have that algorithm to do that. And it never it never they they never really launched it. They launched one. It's in our um, it's in our outside in Framingham, but. Smart hasn't really taken off. Weber's really backed off theirs other than their iGrow. But the best smart function, the best smart, we've sold out of them. It's called the meter for $99. It's a guided cooking. It's a guided cooking system on your phone that'll tell you, that'll walk you through every step. And their algorithm estimates how long you, how long that salmon on the grill will take, or, or you can even use it in a stove. It estimates how long to cook and rest. Right, because the food when you take it out of the oven, it it continues to cook. So this so this algorithm actually accounts for that. So you can use this for an outside grill or or inside your oven for ninety nine dollars. You know, it gives you the step by step process, gives you the meat, and gives you the algorithm. This is probably the coolest thing I've seen, and it actually works. I've had mine on order. Everyone else has theirs in the store, I guess. So I'm going to go through the different kinds of configuration. We had that. Um, we we have the we have that webinar that we just did, but just figured just to if you're thinking an outside kitchen, you know there's there's four different types. This being the L, um, there's your basic island. It's just a bank. Basically, what you want to do is just figure out what the grill is and 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 the attachments, and then just put it in an island. Um, the best piece of advice I have is figure out what the grill is. Start there because you always want to sternalize your cooking. And then work your way from there, and then walk what you um, walk the actual configuration because you have the L shape, which is really popular when you're cooking on one side of the L and entertaining on the other. On the U, you uh, you're you're cooking in the middle, and then you you entertain on either the front or the either side, and then you have the galley where you're cooking on one side and entertaining on the other. So take all that your all the uh, you know the grills, the 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 side burners, the sinks, faucets. Take it, map it out, and and that's how you design really an outside uh, an outside space. We have that webinar that I would encourage you to look at at the end. So, next webinar is going to be we'll go back inside the house to how how to start your kitchen project. Mm -hmm. That's actually next month. I wish everybody a nice Memorial Day, and we have some good questions to answer. Thank you, Steve. Yep, we have a lot, uh, few questions from the registration. Um, if there's questions that came up along the way here today that you have for us, please use the Q&A feature in the Zoom uh, to send them over to us. Uh, we can get started with some from the registration. Um, Steve and Fran, the first question, let's go. Um, we want a smoker and a better grill than we have. Is it a good idea to buy a combination grill smoker? I guess the other option would be to buy them separately. I guess we want to talk through the pros and cons there. Um, yeah, you, you know, we carry like six or seven of the main brands, uh, Kalamazoo being the best and Weber. But there's like a whole legion of, uh, of, of especially smokers that, that you can buy. Really depends on... Again, I go back to the first question. It depends what you really want to do. Uh, if I was to advise, if you really want to smoke and really want to grill, you're better off buying two separate units because it just doesn't seem like when you talk about smoking, especially electric convection, which most of them are, or even gas convection, it just doesn't seem like you're getting those hot temperatures to really grill. I mean, you can get there eventually, but it's not really grilling. Um, so I, I would say two different. Two different uh, two different types is probably the best, and really, and if you if you had to say well which one would be best, it, it really depends. I mean, Kamados are really good if you want to learn because it can do some of both, but but smoking the 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 that 
pellet infusion is really, it, people really like that. So again, really depends on what you want to do. If you're more grill, less smoke, or you want a good combination, then Kamado can do them both. But that that would be my advice, not really being able to ask you directly. Yeah, completely agree there. It's like, you know, Traeger's kind of one that lets you do a little bit of both there. But like you said before, Steve, too, you're not, you know, if you're going to do majority of grilling, you're not really going to get those sear marks. And, you know, if you're doing hot dogs and hamburgers and things like that, the Traeger's probably not you know, the, the number one option there. So that's another one that can kind of give you a little bit of both. But to kind of get the best of both worlds, you, you're really looking at two separate units there. Thank you, guys. Uh, and Alyssa, Alyssa is actually with us in the chat here. So if, uh, if that answered your question uh, or didn't answer your question, Alyssa, let us let us know. Um, next up, we have um, there's a question. I'm looking for the the best barbecue product. So I guess do you guys want to summarize like if what's uh, at the at the best type level? What what's the difference uh, between the best and you know better options? Well. You know, to me, I, I always, there's two questions I, I, I hesitate to answer is what is the best and what do you buy? What, what do you have in your backyard? And the reason is, is because typically you don't cook like me, uh, I would hope. And um, <laughs> <laughs> how do you cook? That said, to me, there's, there's I, I think the industry, everybody in the industry will admit that Kalamazoo is the best because you really do not compromise with that because it's so deep, it cooks so thoroughly, and you add the inf you add the real infusion of wood and charcoal. It's the best. But not everybody wants to spend 25,000 plus 30 percent for marine grit. Uh, so with that in mind, of the three grills that 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 we pick, the next best, which everyone would consider to be the best, if we're talking about gas, is I, I happen to like the DCS because you can do anything on that grill, really. Uh, I, with all due respect, I think Lynx is a great grill and there's something to be said for ceramic. And there's something to be said for Heston with the rotisserie and the colors. But I, I think for an everyday grill, that's, that's a great grill. And in terms of, in terms of um, Kamados, from what I, I've never worked with a big green egg. We used to sell it and we had a we had a uh, a sales rep here that had a big green egg, and likes Kamado Joe better because the cleanup is easier and it's easier to understand. It's easier to use. Um, with that, that would cover what I would think to be the best of every category. And that might transition to a question we had. Um, um, so how come you don't carry uh, Next Grill or? Say Napoleon or like other brands that other stores carry. You can start with this one. Yeah. So a lot of that too, you know, kind of in everything that we do, we try to kind of look at brands and work with brands that tend, you know, not to say that anything's perfect, but brands that tend to hold up over time. You know, a lot of times with, with some of those kind of next gen grills that you see, you know, they're, they're really just not made to last. And what happens a lot of times after you use them kind of the first year, definitely through the second year. You'll see that even within the, the 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 burners and the flavorizer bars and things like that, that they just kind of burn through and don't last. So that the quality is not is not really there. And really what you end up finding is, yeah, you, you probably spent a little bit of less money and you got a good deal on it, but you're replacing that every you know two to three years versus something even where Weber, you know, those are kind of built more to last over time for sure, kind of in that similar category. So I would definitely say it's really the the, the quality construction of those and really kind of burning through and not lasting over time. And you find yourself really replacing those every couple of years. So, you know, over time, you're really spending about the same amount of money. You're just kind of doing it over multiple grills. I, I really think that, 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 that appliances, that appliances now and grills, there, there is a, there is a, there are products that I would say do not buy. And it was never used to be that way in appliances where if someone bought a G or Whirlpool, I'm fine with that. Now there's now there's um now there's all sorts of foreign brands that are coming in that that aren't vetted and 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 people can have problems. And and we mentioned that on our blog and everything else. With grills, it's the same way. We've tried every grill. Yeah. We, we every year we say we gotta have something, we gotta, we gotta show somebody 
something different. Mm -hmm. And every year it's like a disappointment. You know, either the grills are impossible to put together or we had a, we had a grill type where, you know, we tested it and our chef put our, put her hand in the middle of the grill while it was on or at a part to illustrate it had a cold spot. I mean, that's like, that's like a cardinal no-no. You shouldn't have like cold spots like that in the middle of a grill. And I really would caution because we seem to be in an industry that loves everything and you read reviews and everybody hates everything because there's a disconnect. There, there's certain things that you just shouldn't buy. And there's certain grill types that you probably aren't best for the way you cook. And you're going to be very careful when you see an, a, a much, a much uh, publicized videoed grill. And I can guarantee you that some of these unknown grills are just, they're either going to fall apart or they're not going to cook, even, even with these pro BTUs that they put out there, they just don't work. And, 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 you know, it seems like we try a grill type review. I think we just didn't do it this year. We resigned to the fact we haven't found one yet. Yeah. We've definitely tested just about everything out there. Every year, no it's like, <laughs> this is the one that's going to yeah. be forever, or this is the lower price yeah. $2,000 pro that'll work. It just never works for us. Yeah. So let's, let's, uh, there's a question. I saw the induction on the grill. I think talking in the presentation, Steve, do you see any, in, see any induction grills in the future? Well, I don't think you're going to see any induction, anything in the future, only because there's a lithium shortage, uh, the component uh, inductions in magnetic. What happens is it bypasses the glass and the, and it excites the metal in the food in the pan pan cooks the food. It's it's the best it's the best way to cook. I don't think you're going to see induction grills because I don't think you're going to see much induction in the next few years because uh, the, the the I guess lithium goes into the burner somehow and there's a wild worldwide shortage because every battery requires lithium and now we're using batteries for our cars and everyone's scrambling to get to the next source of lithium. So I don't think you'll see it. I I think I think it's got applications. I just don't think you're going to see it in the short term like side burners, like you see in the Traeger. But, you know, other than that, you know, the thing, the nice thing with induction on like a side burner, just like you said, Steve, it's kind of directly transferring that heat to the pan. So, you know, when you have a gas side burner outdoors, you know, that really needs to be super powerful, more so than indoors, because, you know, a lot of times you're trying to boil a pot of water for corn or something like that. But out, outdoors, we have the wind and the elements that's taken you know, a lot of those BTUs that's in there. I mean, that's really reducing it because it's outside again, something that you don't deal with indoors. So there I could definitely see induction becoming a little bit more popular when the parts are available <laughs> um, on those side burners, for sure. That could definitely be somewhere where I see it. But as far as kind of full grills, things like that, yeah, I'm not so sure there. Yeah, I don't think you'll see it. Too bad, too. It's a question in the chat. We, um, is there any model of grill that you see being reliable year after year? Uh, like the Honda, Toyota, Jeep of grills. We want to make the right purchase once. Um, we are hamburger, steak, veggie grillers. Well, first of all, a lot of that has to do with 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 people, right? You know, one thing, um, we had a video on how to clean a grill. We brought in, one of, one of my friends from camp is actually a professional griller. And he did a video on how to clean the grill. Now, what you need to do is, if you want a grill to last, um, and I would encourage you to really look at the construction of every grill. I think, I think you'll be okay with the Weber, you know, certainly with the, um, certainly with any of the pros, you should be fine. Cause all it is, is really stainless steel and, 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 and really solid stainless or ceramic elements that in mind, you got to clean it. Right. And then you've got to put a cover on it. You clean it, put a cover on it. I think you're going to be fine with, with, with a Weber to be quite honest with you further ashore, further Further out to the bay, you're gonna have a real problem. Um, salt air just kills it. Although I would say the Kalamazoo that we had on in in our in in Dorchester, and that's about as salty as you're gonna get. Plus, you got all the exhaust. It's done pretty well. Um, it's been out there for ten years. You got little tea. They call it tea bagging, where by the knobs, it's a little, it's a, it's it's a little discolored. But other than that, it's done pretty well. But really, a lot of a lot of that has to do with you. Clean the grill every time. And the way to do it is just fire it up, get a really good grill brush and scrub the heck out of it, burn the drippings off, put a cover on, you'll be fine. Cool. 
Are there any other, uh, keep the questions coming in the chat. We have a couple more uh, to get to here. Uh, this one's off topic guys, but is, uh came in the registration. Um, I want to convert my gas stove to induction. That's been a popular <laughs> discussion lately. Um, do you just want to maybe summarize the process there or the, the considerations there? Yeah, we just, we just, it's funny. We just wrote a blog post on that. We're doing an induction seminar. I've got to tell you from people from California. Um, yeah, this is not a plug and play. If you're converting, um, you're, if you're converting a, uh, a 120 12 amp to a 240 50 amp there's wiring plumbing um you've got to rewire back to the box uh to the uh from the circuit to and then you've got to redo the uh receptacle in your range uh you need new probably need new pots if they're not metallic um it's about a 3500 dollars change six steps we have the uh we have a video on youtube that's that that pretty much goes over each step. And then uh, maybe last call for questions in the chat. Um, oh, here we go. Um, we'll finish with that question, I think, actually. Um, so two questions left. I'm thinking about putting together an outdoor kitchen. What should I do? Um, you talked about that briefly in the presentation, Steve. You want to take that one? Brandon, you want to take that one? And I'll finish or... Yeah, no, it's kind of really kind of how you laid it out too. I think the first thing is kind of looking at the space that you have too. One, it, also I'd say even taking a step back, it's seeing what else besides the grill because there's so many options out there that really make your life easier. Everything from trash chutes to side burners to griddles. There's a lot out there that's available for kind of grill accessories. So it's kind of seeing what else would help make your life easier as a griller too, in addition to the grill. And then it's figuring out the space and, say, and seeing, you know, Within that space, what do you like the best? Is it a, or what can fit really in that space? An L shape, you, you know, are you hosting a lot of people? What would make more sense for where you're cooking versus where they're standing? Um, the galley style. So I think it's kind of figuring out exactly what you want there besides the grill, the space that you have available, and the style of kitchen, whether it's L shape, galley style, a U shape, you know, things like that, kind of figuring out those things first and then kind of going from there. Yeah, I, I think really what it comes down to is what's your entertainment strategy? Are we eating in the backyard? Mm -hmm. um, are we, um, what are we doing? And then what is the space? And then um, start with the grill, work your way out. Don't forget ventilation. If you're, you know, I'm not a real fan of putting these mm -hmm. in three season porches, Jesus. But but if you are, you got to consider ventilation as well. And then, and then how, how are we entertaining? And then you go from there with the four configurations. We had that in our, in our last webinar. And then the best piece of advice the, uh, is, uh, is just chalk it off. And if you don't like the way you're walking, start over, but do that before you plumb any lines and make any decisions. And there's some really good, uh, you know, the, the best thing about this is there's some really good kind of like order kits that are actually marine grade that'll last like urban bonfire. I'm sure there are others. We can say, Hey, I want this here, there. I want these accessories. I want it kind of like in gunmetal gray with a decked in top. And we, they, they can do that for you. It, it's, it's, it's plug and play. We don't have to get masons and contractors and everything, or you can. And it it's, it's very simple to do much. Well, not very simple, but much easier than ever. Yeah, like Steve said, there's a uh, we did a webinar on that that specific topic uh, just last month. That's you can get that on our YouTube right now. And uh, I think last question for today, and thank you to Alyssa for teeing this one up for us. Um, is Yale having any grill sales this weekend? Um, Alyssa was the one who was interested. In maybe the the Weber potentially. Um, you, who wants to take that one? I'm 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 in marketing on merch. <laughs> I'll take that. So what, what, what we're doing is, I mean, the the hard part about grills is um, is getting them assembled and delivered. So what we did is we just made it inexpensive for a delivery and assembly, and we just said, okay, for the summer we'll just do both for one ninety nine. Put it right in your porch, take the old one. Um, that's about as much of a grill sale. That the problem is is that um, last year there weren't any grills. 
and I'm not sure um, because the, the the pandemic just blew through everything. I'm not sure what the inventory looks like this year. I haven't really looked other than doing the doing the doing the marketing for it. What are we doing? Anything? Yeah, there's definitely availability. And, you know, there's kind of three grills that are some of the more popular ones that we stock with Weber, a three burner, a couple of different three burner options, a four burner and stainless steel. Like you said, it really kind of helps to kind of last over time. And really, it's, you know, like you said, the, the toughest thing sometimes is getting them delivered and assembled where people want them. So we've done that for $199 delivery and assembly includes removal of your old grill. We'll take that away for you. Um, and that's kind of the promotions that we have going on right now, too, for, for that delivery and assembly of the grills. Yeah, I think a lot of other people, when they can do it, and then we deliver within a two-hour window with the call heads and all that other stuff. I don't think anybody's, has anybody, who else is doing it this year? Anybody? Or? No, most people aren't really kind of doing the delivery and assembly. And if they are, they're definitely charging a high amount on those. It's yeah. definitely changed over years with grills for sure. And, you know, even a Home Depot, places like that are charging hundreds of dollars for assembly alone. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's nobody around to do anything. Yeah. All right, guys, I think that's a great way to uh, end there. So thank everybody for the great questions. Thank you for the presentation, Steve. Um, we will be sharing this via email uh, where you signed up for this webinar. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. We'll also be posting this to our YouTube uh, channel uh, where you can see all of our other previous YouTube, um, our, our, all of our previous webinars, excuse me, and product reviews uh, on there. And uh, with that, thanks everybody. Have a great week.